Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soul scientist. And on this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. So if you like the sounds of that, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Bleh, bleh. Be sure to hit that subscribe button down below, give this video a thumbs up, and let me know in the comments below where you garden or where you own house plants because it actually helps me gear my videos just a little bit suited, better suited towards you guys because it does matter for both houseplants and the outdoor garden. Today we're talking about the all too famous concept of bottom watering. So if you don't know what bottom watering is, let me just show you. Bottom watering is the concept where you actually have a, I just did it for you. You can hear the water coming out. So, Oh God. Bottom watering is the concept where you have your nursery pot, which is this pot, and then you have a cover pot with no holes. Inside the cover pot, you have your water, and then you place your plant inside. What it does is through capillary action, the water begins to flow up into the plant's profile, which waters it. If you're choosing to do this and you're noticing that your pot is extra heavy and you, there, you think that there's extra water in there more than what the plant can handle or you may have overwatered. just take the plant, tip it sideways, make that soil profile just a little bit taller, add some negative pressure to it and you will get some extra water to come out because that's very common with bottom watering is to have a perch water table that's a little higher than normal. So all you got to do is do this and then it comes out. The other thing you can do is just give your pot a little tiny squeeze and it's just going to help to make sure that those roots aren't sitting in water. Lastly, what you can do is if you have a female in the house, you can use some of their feminine hygiene products and shove that in the top of this uh, to help get out some of that extra moisture. Or you can use a, a cotton ball and just actually put it into one of these holes here shove it up with a toothpick, whatever the case is, and it eventually will drain some of that water out. So that is some of the, one of the issues you may have with bottom watering is you end up with too much water in the bottom of your container. But what I am here to tell you is that bottom watering can cause other issues. And one of those issues actually being salt buildup. I'm going to show you guys a very sad plant uh, which is not doing well, mostly because it was in a decorative pot in a grocery store and I never repotted it. I just didn't think to you. And it was probably because it was sitting in its own filth for extended periods of time, which resulted in a lot of salt buildup. So I will show you what this looks like in a plant soil. It's all this white kind of crust buildup. And this isn't mold, this is not mold. If you are wondering what mold's bad and what mold is good, then check out my video on mold. This is actual salt, it looks like crystalline salt. So that is what is here. The other place where you may see this is actually on a terracotta pot. You may see it around the, the lip of the pot or building up on the outside of the pot, or you may start to notice it on the rim of your pot. If you're bottom watering and you're noticing this happening, this video is for you. So in this video, we're gonna be going over exactly how to get the salt out of your soil, whether it's because you're bottom watering or because you have naturally salty water, which can happen if you have water treatment or if you've over fertilized or if the soil's just generally old. It's just a good idea to flush or take care of your salts every once in a while. Then we'll get into more of the science and why salts aren't good for plants. So if you're here for the science, be sure to stick around because we're getting super nerdy today, like really nerdy when it comes to soil, roots, and plants, and salt, all that fun stuff. So our natural reaction when we see the salts on the surface of our pot is to actually just flush the soil. But because salt is water soluble, this does work to our benefit, however, because the salt already very visibly on the surface or maybe on the rim of the pot, it's in our interest actually just to remove that top layer of soil, wipe down the edges of our container and just physically take the salt out before we start flushing. If we flush that salt that's on the top of the surface of that pot and we try to push it through, 
we're going to be sitting there flushing <laughs> and unsure as to whether or not we flushed enough to actually get that to move through the profile from top to bottom. So take some of the pain out, make the experience a little bit quicker and actually just physically remove that top surface of the soil. If you've had to remove quite a bit of it, you can always top dress with a compost or manure, just something that has lots of nutrients in it. There's nothing wrong with that. It'll act as a fertilizer. It'll help feed microbes that are maybe in your soil that are beneficial. Yes, in potted soil, it's very alive. So feed the stuff that's in there. And then what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna take it into the kitchen and we're going to run it under the tap. In an ideal world, we're all rich and we can we, we can pay for distilled water so we can flush it out with distilled water. If that is the case, or you have a plant that you love very, very much, then please do use distilled water to flush it out. If that's not the case, you're just gonna wanna run it under tap water. And when I say run it under tap water, I literally mean flush it, like have it pouring out the bottom. There's no physical way to overwater the plant if the container itself is the proper size for the plant. So do not worry about that. Just flush the whole system out. If you think you've overwatered or you think that the soil is retaining too much water, use those tricks that I gave you at the beginning of the video, which is simply tipping the pot, maybe giving it a slight squeeze or sticking something absorbent either into the top of the soil or onto the bottom of the soil to help with some of the outtake. So why does this matter? Like, why do we have to get rid of the salt out of the soil? Why can't we just leave it? Yeah, it looks a little bit ugly, but what, what does it do to the plant? Let's get into that science. I think it's important for us to know that salt isn't necessarily just sodium. It can actually be a combination of things. So it could be of sodium and calcium, sodium and potassium, magnesium, chlorides, nitrates, sulfates, bicarbonates, like there's a huge list of different types of salts. They can come from almost anywhere from the actual fertilizer to both organic and inorganic um, to the actual water that we're using. There's just, they're everywhere naturally occurring. What happens when we bottom water is that because the salt is typically water soluble, you're always gonna be able to push it out if you're watering from the top and letting it flush out the bottom. But when we're bottom watering, the salts just kind of sit in suspension. So how does this affect the plant? Well, roots naturally actually have a salt concentration in them and they use this to their benefit. So some what plant roots will have is they'll have a salt concentration that is higher than the surrounding soil. This helps facilitate a process called diffusion. So this is actually one of the main ways that plants uptake nutrients. The way it works is the roots, because they have a higher concentration, they're constantly keeping almost like a halo around uh, the root in the soil at a lower concentration. What ends up happening is that lower concentration soil acts as an osmosis barrier. And so the higher concentration soil that has more salt in it will actually move water through mass flow into the lower concentration area, which will then be taken up through passive diffusion through a semi-permeable layer on the outside of the root and then up into the plant. So depending on the plant's native adaptations, the level of salt concentration that a plant can handle will fluctuate. There are some plants that are more saline resistant than others. So some plants are better adapted to a higher concentration in soil salt, and therefore their roots generally will contain a very high sodium content in them um, to allow for mass flow and diffusion to take place. The problem occurs when the root has a lower sodium concentration than the surrounding soil. What ends up happening is that natural progression into the actual root will end, it will stop entirely. And then in some cases, because it is a semi permeable layer and it's not a active transport, it's a passive transport, the nutrients actually might be leached out of the roots into the soil. 
So that is why we flush our soil and that is why we want to try to eliminate a buildup of salt when possible. So what does a salt poisoning, I guess you could say, or buildup of salt in the actual soil look like on the plant? It's actually gonna show up in three different types of deficiencies. The first one being phosphorus, second one being potassium, and the last one being zinc. The reason being is those are the three main nutrients that are actually transported through diffusion into the plant. So when this gradient is disrupted, what ends up happening is those nutrients aren't able to be taken up into the plant and therefore utilized. So what will happen is we'll end up with a plant that looks like it's deficient in those three nutrients. If you're noticing a phosphorus, a potassium, or a zinc deficiency, then you may want to take some action, whether that be repotting or flushing the soil to see if that helps before you fertilize. Because if you just add more synthetic fertilizer on, what will end up happening is you will actually disrupt it even further and you'll make the situation even worse and your plant will just continue to spiral downhill. I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new. There, there's nothing wrong with bottom watering, by the way. I do it all the time. Um, just use it with caution and if you're noticing some issues or you're noticing buildup, take care of that buildup um, because it will just begin to exasperate it. The other thing that you may want to do is actually Google and look up the plant that you're watering or that you're bottom watering with to see if they're salt resilient or if they're actually salt sensitive. Figure out what gradient they need. That will help you determine how often you should be repotting, how often you maybe should be even fertilizing, and how often you should be bottom watering or maybe just not bottom watering at all. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and let me know if you've ever noticed salt buildup on the top of your soil. I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.